Bring it back. Is going on, everybody? Uh, I'm doing something different than the fishing scenery. Uh, for a long time, I've been wanting a smoker, and uh, I just don't have the funds to uh, buy one, you know. So, what I decided to do, I've seen it on YouTube, I've seen it on Facebook, but uh, decided to go ahead and join the party and make a smoker out of a filing cabinet. Got this one here for about five bucks at a garage sale. Um, I already took a couple of other shelves out before I decided to do uh, a video. You know, maybe somebody else would want to do this as well. I already took out the first two cabinets, uh, cleaned them up, and um, just took a few things apart. Here, open this. Sorry for the wind and for the noise. It's real windy out here today. But uh, basically, I'm just taking these things off. These, these two... Uh, bolts that are holding the uh, the handle in place and uh, this is coming out along with this plate and this locking mechanism that stops it from opening I'm not gonna need that um, also taking out the uh, slider rack taking that out and uh, also these tracks come out they have plastic in them so if y'all do this make sure y'all take everything out because that plastic will leave a nasty smell and I'm sure a nasty taste and it won't be pleasant for your meats. Um, these tracks are staying here. These are the ones I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna mount some, uh, I guess the rest of them there. That's what I took out from the these rollers here. Took them out, I'm gonna mount them right here on the side. And uh, they're actually gonna sit on top of it, on top of these uh, rails, that way they can slide back and forth. All right guys, so right now, all I'm doing is uh, taking out these uh, bolts right here that's holding this uh, this divider. And that's going in the trash. Um, these things, I'm going to hold on to these things because they might come in handy at some point during the build. Uh, it's better just to keep everything uh, just in case. Uh, these bolts as well, I'm going to keep. Okay, now it's time for the uh, for the screws that are holding on to the actual uh, handle and uh, keeping this plate in place along with the locking mechanism. Okay, I got the handles off, the screws out. And this plate, you're just going to have to uh, stick a screwdriver in here and just pry it on out. See, and that's where the locking mechanism is. Uh, don't need that. So that is also going in the trash. All right, so now I got myself a uh, cleaned out drawer. Um, like I said, what I was talking about earlier in the beginning about toxins and whatnot, about uh, you know, about the plastic and the smell. All these are gonna either get stripped, or I'm gonna put a torch to them and get all the paint off, and then I'm gonna coat it in a uh, high temperature paint. I'm just gonna spray it down with that. So I'm not too sure if I'm just gonna put aircraft stripper in here, or if I'm just gonna put fire in here in the boxes and just let it burn off. Um, I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do yet. Um, I'm on a budget, so I'm gonna try to do the cheapest and most effective way to uh, get this paint off. I said earlier, I already took the other two. I'm gonna take this one out. Uh, it stops right about there. Uh, the whole cabinet itself just comes right up. There's these two little locking things that hold the drawer in place. Just work it out, you know, and it'll come out just like that. And here, I just close these uh, things back, the rollers, close those back, and uh, there's these little nipples here that stop it from, uh, stop the rails from coming out, so I just got a pair of vice grips and uh, cinch them down and get those out of the way 
here you might want to use gloves when you're doing this just in case your hand slips now to pull this out it's gonna be a little loud so And just like that it comes out just break that off just bend it back and forth and it'll come off it'll break off okay and then just pull it gotta give it some force because uh the ball bearings are holding it in place those are the ball bearings and the plastic piece this is the piece that's trash. And this is the piece I'm keeping. Now, now when I was trying to dry fit the uh, cabinets and the uh, the drawers in the cabinet, um, these things right here, that's what the rail was sitting on. But these were getting in the way. These were in the way when I was trying to do a, uh, a trial run. And uh, basically I'm just breaking these off. The, they're just tack welded on. But I'm trying to break these off that way uh nothing will get hung up in the sliding and sliding out process and there's a clean drawer um now the only thing i gotta do is uh put the rails on here uh that way it'll slide on that uh on the rails that are in the cabinet so I know, basically since i had cleaned up the uh shelves already um, what I did, I drilled some holes and um, I had some uh, some bar, pieces of bar just laying around and I cut those, measure them, you know, uh, this is actually where the rack is going to sit on. It wasn't going to actually sit on the cabinet itself, it was going to be lift, lifted up and um, this is what I was going to do for the grill. This is where the grill is going to sit right on top, top of these bars, they're about three inches uh, off from the bottom. Uh, that's basically what I did and uh, over here on the sides uh, I just hammered them down just to bend them and then I got the angle grinder and I'm basically grinding them down maybe about like um, maybe a half an inch sticking up uh, once it's done and um, that way I'll be able to slide in and out of the, the uh, cabinet itself and uh, it's almost done um, I just have to figure out what I'm gonna do with the uh, the side rails what I told you earlier about putting the rails on the side to uh, sit on top of the rails on the inside that wasn't gonna work so uh, what my plan is so far is to go ahead and drill holes in here put nuts and uh, nuts bolts and washers you know good size washers uh, that way they'll fit in the uh, in the rack that stayed in the uh, in the cabinet I already got some done last time uh, I had the camera going. I was taking all the hardware off of the uh, cabinets and such. Um, what I did do, what I didn't do off camera, is I went ahead and put this little vent. Uh, I just got the Dremel on, did what I could with that, and uh, cleaned that up. Um, now all I have to do is uh, put some washers and stuff like that for the rails. And... Um, Put that together so I can see what else I need to do. And I know last time I mentioned that I was gonna use one of the old rails, some of the sliders that were attached to it, and go ahead and use that one. I mean, use this to uh, to mount on the side. That way, it'll slide in and out. That was gonna work. So what I did is I uh, went to Home Depot. I went to Home Depot and I got a uh, series of just nuts and bolts and a washer uh, this is actually going to go into the cabinet and this is going to be on the outside so this is going to sit on the rail and it should be sliding back and forth um, it was going to be easier than installing that rail and doing all that drilling and all kinds of stuff and uh, not only that it had to be a precise measurement only because there was really no room for error but this i have some leeway um, I mean, obviously it's it's wide, but I mean, I just need something to sit on, something that it would move back and forth. With this in hand, it would have to be a real good, uh, really good measurement. I mean, just because it's a tight fit, you know, um, 
I really didn't want to be messing around with measuring and adjusting and all that, so I figured this uh, nut and bolt and washer method would be a little easier for me. I mean, you could do the way you want. Uh, this is just for me to get by with it. So here I just measured out and uh, measured out where I'm gonna want the washers at to fit on the rail. And uh, I already marked them, I got the measurements, so now I just gotta drill them out. All right, now that I got the uh, hose drilled out on the side, this is basically what it's gonna be looking like. Uh, I have the bolt, the washer, and the nut, and um, also put it on. This is basically the setup. I have the bolt, the washer, and the nut. I'm also putting on another nut just to give it that spacing that I'm gonna need. And then, and then basically what I'm doing is sticking this in here on the side. Sticking this here on the side, so that's basically the space I'm looking for that's gonna be on that rail. Now of course, just get the other nut and go over here on this side. So that's basically the way it's gonna be spaced out. That's what's gonna sit on the roller, go back and forth. That's the back one. You did a front one and the side ones, and I'll show you how it, it slides into the uh, cabinet. All right, guys, so I already got the uh, the washers and the spacers and whatnot already, uh, already installed. I'm gonna install it on this top cabinet and check it out. And, Well, it sits in there nice already and uh, it fits in pretty good good slides in so, so that's basically how it's gonna sit it's not leaning or anything uh, if it starts leaning I'll just put a couple of screws to uh, maybe on the side over here where the end of the drawer is gonna come out and Put some screws here that way um below stop that way it doesn't wanna wanna bend down but as of right now it's not wanting to go do that now to put the grill in and clean up all this stuff uh, i'll do the rest of the cabinets i'll start stripping the inside start stripping the doors with some stripper uh strip the outside uh get all that paint i don't want paint on here when i'm done with the drawers um i'll get started with the uh, stripping process and see what i'm gonna do first i might start off with the inside and then uh do the doors and then do the outside the outside i might do with the grinder just because it's so much but the doors and the inside uh, i'm gonna be doing the uh, stripper with that one yeah so after putting in the drawers and everything um i found out that it was sagging a little bit in the back so here on the side it was uh popping out a little bit on the bottom and the top was uh, going in just a little bit. I mean, not a lot, but just enough to uh, kind of bother me and me to do something with it. So basically what I did, I got uh, some nut and bolts just drilled in the back. I put the cabinet in, lifted it up to where I needed it, marked it, uh, drilled some holes, and um, that's where I'm putting, I've already put that one in on the top. The middle one, um, I just drilled the hole. And I figured I'll show y'all what I was doing at the same time. That's why I said that you'll figure out what you need to do once you start putting things together. You'll see what you need to modify and whatnot. But that's what I added to it, um, just to keep it from sagging down a little bit. And like I said, it wasn't too much, but it was enough to bother me for me to want to do that. A little bit extra work uh, just to please myself. But that's basically what I'm doing right now. Finished putting the bolts in the back to keep the racks up. Now we're doing some stripping. Bubba showed up, he came for lunch. He's helping me out get the stripper put on and taken off. And then uh, from there, we should move on to the doors, to the cabinets themselves. But uh, I might get that torch over there and just put the torch to it and burn all the paint off. So, but we'll see what's easier. All right, so I basically have the uh, drawers uh stripped uh stripped of what i can um they still got some paint on them i'm about to put the uh torch to it 
and um, hopefully get some more of the paint off. If not, at least the top layer of it. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and smoke it for a couple of days just to kind of help get the rest of the paint off. But that's what my plans are. I already got the inside strip somewhat the same way there's still paint left over. All right guys, uh, just like I figured, um, it was gonna warp when I put the torch to it. And then I had to work them back into shape. Um, and it took a little bit, surprisingly, with the torch. So if you could do, uh, get away with a stripper, just, I would say just strip it. Uh, I say it's about the same amount of time as torching it, but with torching, I didn't get everything off. I got most of it off. So uh, if you're not lazy like me, just go ahead and uh, do stripper. And uh, what I did was drilled holes in the bottom. Not drilled, but I burned holes in the bottom. That's gonna be where the little uh, little opener. Uh, I have two more of those that are gonna go on the side. Um, so now, oh, and I burned holes through the bottom, even though they had little vents uh, for the dividers. But I went ahead and made uh, extra holes in them. Uh, right now, I got some mesquite in there, soaking up some uh, lighter fluid. That way, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and burn it a couple of times before I actually use it. Uh, on the bottom, I actually drew, cut a hole, all, you know, a line throughout. It doesn't look nice, but I mean, you know, it's gonna get the job done. And um, that's basically what I did. So that way the, the holes on the side, I actually did them on both sides. I might do one in the back. I might do one in the front of the actual cabin itself. I'm not too sure. I might do it in the front, but um, that's what it's gonna look like. Um, I'm gonna put some high temp paint on it sometime soon. Uh, like I said, I'm just gonna burn most of it, just burn it a couple of times and see what's gonna happen. Um, the issue that I had with the warping of the drawers, uh, they did not go in and out as they did before I put the heat to them. What the heat did, it just warped it, so it kind of threw the these little things off, threw them off track. But um, but I bent them back in place. Um, just takes some patience, you know, and to get it done. But I'm gonna light it up and let most of the stuff burn off. And the outside, uh, I'm not too worried about the outside. Like I said, it's just the inside that I'm worried about. The inside of the cabinet and the drawers. So uh, see what happens. All right, guys, I'm just about done with it. The only thing I'm lacking is the paint. This open. This is gonna be the little vent for the air to get in to give me more heat. Got another one on this side as well. And then, uh, like I told y'all before, where I was gonna put this other one, I went ahead and put it right here in the front. Uh, I put them all back. I have put a temperature gauge. I need to put a few more, two more actually, because I'm only using three boxes for uh, for any kind of meat. But the top one, I'm gonna be using the top one uh, tomorrow night. So figured I'll install that. Uh, and that's about it. Like I said, I just need to paint it. All right, guys, this is my first time officially using it to smoke something. I got the uh, sweat box with the uh, hickory wood chips in it. And then on the bottom, I'm getting ready to put the heat to it. Got the uh, charcoal chimney started. I'm gonna put that on the bottom, uh, let the coals die down, and then I'm gonna add the uh, wood chunks to it that way I can get it to smoke. See how red hot they are? And then. I'm gonna go ahead and let them die down before I put the uh, wood chunks on it. That way it'll give it that smoke, that smoke effect instead of just uh, setting the wood on fire. And I'm basically just using a small trim hammer to uh, open the doors and shut them well, with the hammer. Uh, what I mentioned earlier about having me having to put those bolts in the back because the uh, drawers were kind of leaning down. So I put the bolts in the back to uh, keep them straight. So with the hammer, I'm able to wedge this under and at least pick it up and push that way it'll go right over that uh that bolt but charcoal starting to die down a little bit 
Now I'm getting ready to add the uh, uh, hickory chunks and then temperature gauge I want it at about 200 250 and then I'm gonna throw the brisket on and uh, let it smoke for about 12 hours see I got it turned on got the wood in there it's really smoking I haven't put no uh, meat in there but as y'all can see it's smoking uh, the smoke's coming through the doors but I mean smoke smoke so it's gonna seep through anywhere it could get through and there's no way to cover that up so you know all you gotta do is just work with what you got and add fire add less fire you know you know how it goes all right guys so it's been about four hours in and we're about to uh check it out take it out wrap it up in some butcher paper and then uh Put it in some uh, butcher paper. Wrap it up. I'm gonna wrap it up and put it back in there for about another uh, eight hours. I had the uh, fat side down that we could get the color on top. Well, I got it fat side up. And since this is the flat, this is the point. I want this to, uh, I want this temperature to be at 200. 165 is the ideal temperature, but I want this flat part to be at 200. So what I'm going to do is stick this thermometer in the middle. They want to get a read, and the way I'm going to put this in. This way. I'm gonna stick this in because there's really no other way for me to put it in and that's gonna be on the uh, in the meat I'll set this up here I'll move this later on so it doesn't melt now this is going back in most of my heat's in the back so I'm gonna put the point side towards the back which is the bigger part and then this, just one puncture through the paper, middle of the meat, just like so. And then I'm gonna get ready to close it. I could probably use my hand, it might not be too much that hunt. All right guys, like y'all noticed, there was not an Indian to the video of me showing what the brisket looked like, how it came out, but it was very good. I was exhausted that day. I was up the whole day. Then at night, uh, right before Easter Sunday, I was up all day, got 12 hours of cooking time on that brisket. And then I took a quick nap, maybe about an hour nap, got up, sliced it. Then I had to get ready for our Easter Sunday get together. Um, that 3 p.m. that day, Shauna and I had to drive to Missouri. So it was about another 14 hour drive and we were just really exhausted. I really regret not getting the finished product of the video. Um, it was, the video was aimed more towards making the smoker, not really cooking a brisket, but I figured I'll throw that in there just to show the cooker being used. And um, so it was very good. I, w I was pleased with it. Um, I can't wait till I do it again. And um, I had a lot of fun making it. You know, I tried making it most educational as I could. And um, so I hope one day, if y'all do decide to make a file cabinet smoke, I hope y'all follow my video and use my video as some kind of guidance. And um, I hope y'all enjoyed it. Just please hit that thumbs up just to let me know that I did do a good job on it. And um, if you have any questions, you know, about something that I didn't include in the video, just leave it in a comment below and I'll reply to you again for watching and I'll get you another video soon. So see y'all later guys.